They say mimicry is the sincerest form of flattery. Let's hope for Bridget's case that's true on this week's episode of D&D Minus. So we are going to begin this combat with a surprise round. Not done punishing you, Bridget, for that natural one. Oh, so okay. this mimic is going to get a... Yeah, I thought it was a mimic. Yeah, yeah. it's a mimic. This mimic is going to get a surprise round against you. That's fair. What is a mimic? It's a shape changer, and it changes into attractive things like treasure or you know, gold or jewels or whatever it is, and then it attacks people when they try to pick up that treasure. Got it. Cool. So he's going to get a surprise round against you, and since you are grappled, he has advantage. All right. <laughs> I have Wrath of Storm. Don't worry about it. Okay. <laughs> so this mimic is holding on to you. You see a tentacle of made out of gold rise out of the center of this chest, and it swings well over your head. <laughs> Just... Well over your head, but it does, it, you are still stuck to it. And next up is Claw. So just really quickly, am I tied to Snedrick and Dave is tied to uh, Bridget? Yes, you are tied to Snedrick okay, I just and you to make cannot sure. see anything. And it's, it's 50 foot rope, I'm guessing? Uh, well, from 25? end to end, it's 50 foot rope. But I would say about 25 feet. So you, wait, he's attacking a thing he can't see. He doesn't, how does he even know that he's in a fight? I assume he can hear the like. Rawr! Okay, so we we can speak to each other underwater. Yeah. All right. We can talk underwater. Yes. Claw, would you like to go I, first? I'm, and Claw, attack? I'm looking through it's my thing. Right near my voice. Whoa, wait. I have to look <laughs> at stuff that takes sight, and I can't use those. Oh dear. I'm not attached to him, so I can't pull him over. Yeah. How how close were we when Bridget got bit? Um, twenty feet. Uh, um, I mean, Eli, how do I know what has, what takes, like, I know this is a silly question, but like, is there something I have that doesn't take sight? Not that I can think of, no. Okay, so just, just, just go for it. Yeah. I mean, you can just, like, swing any weapon and maybe hit something That's if you want. Right, right, but I was trying to see if I had anything that was... Yeah, but, like, I'm here and you're here and... <laughs> So, wait, if I actually use my turn to do radiant damage, they would see, like, a flash, though, right? Absolutely, Okay, yes. cool. If I, all right, so if anything actually did attack me. Yeah, any attacks that give off light will cool. temporarily light up the area. Okay, so if I just, one of my key attacks is, like, uh, to take the dodge action. Mm -hmm. Is there just a dodge action that's not one of my special attacks? Yeah, I just do a you dodge. You can just dodge. But, but I mean, will it even matter? <laughs> You're tied to a rope, though, so he's just going to, like, tuck into a ball. <laughs> but, like, there's the no rope. point in attacking because I might hit somebody else. So, like, and I know that I probably won't see if something's coming at me, but that's literally the only thing I can think of to do is to be defensive as yeah, opposed so to offensive. If you take the dodge action... Then he has advantage against, uh, against the next attack. Right, yeah. I'm trying to cancel his advantage by getting an advantage myself, maybe. Yeah. Is that what happens? Mm-hmm. Okay, then I'll take the dodge action. Do I need to roll now or later? Nope, uh, the dodge action just happens. You don't have to roll. Okay. Okay. All right, and that's your turn? Yep. That is Claw's turn. All right. Next up is the Mimic. Uh, again, it has a hold on Bridget, so it is going to attack her. And it is, oh, it crits. So that Fuck. golden oh. tentacle mm -hmm. rises out of the top. It missed you the first time, but it comes back around and crack lands square down on top of you. That's okay. I have Wrath of Storm. Remind me, what's a crit again? Uh, crit like it. <laughs> 
Because I looked this up the other day. I was like, oh, I'm pretty sure that's not what it is. It means it does double damage. You roll it once and then you double that damage. Okay. <laughs> I thought Eli was just taunting. I thought you'd just be like, <laughs> uh, tell, me what, tell me again one more time. If I roll a fucking 20, do I kick your ass or no? <laughs> yeah. Uh, so tell me how much I take and then I get to react to that because I have Wrath of the Storm. Yeah. So you are going to take 17 points of damage. Holy shit, I have two points left. All right. Fun. Um, one second. How how did you get to 17 divided by 2? It is. <laughs> oh yeah. It how rolled I... a If you must know, it rolled a 7 times 2 mm-hmm. is 14 plus 3. Plus 3. Got it, got it. 17. Oh, where's the plus the plus Just three. double checking your math. Uh that's okay. it's it's attack is 1d8 plus 3. Oh, okay. That's fair. That was fun. Okay, now he needs to make a dexterity saving throw. All righty. He gets an eight. Wait, can I only do that when they're attacking me? Or? Oh, that's right. Because you are a divination wizard. You get to uh, decide two rolls a day. Uh, is it any time? I think it, I think it was any time. No, it's, yep. it's, it's any, any roll. See him. Any roll. Any time before he rolls. Oh, oh, hell yeah. He gets an eight. Right. Excellent. What to, I mean, he could have used the eleven because he had to, to beat a thirteen. Oh, okay. Then he gets an eleven. Use the eleven. He gets an eleven. Awesome. Right. Awesome. Yep. So, um, uh, he's gonna take eight damage. Cool. Spicy. Nice. So yeah, this this tentacle of gold comes smashing down right on you. It hits you hard, but just as it does, you sort of, again, feel this flash of lightning and just sort of explodes out of you and the tentacles sort of burst off of you. Now, you are still stuck to it uh, because you haven't tried to escape yet, but... But we all know where it is now. You all know where it is because of that lightning. Yeah, that flash of lightning has illuminated the water so you know the general area of it. Are we no longer blinded or no? This round, you will be... Uh, I'll say that the lightning sort of crackles across the surface of the mimic. Uh, each round is like six seconds or so, technically. So I will say you are not blind for the rest of this round. Starting at the beginning of next round, uh, Claw and Dave are blind again. So by the time you go again, Morgan. <laughs> exactly, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. actually, actually, no, because it, that wasn't my turn. That was the Kraken's turn. And by the time I can do another light spell. Oh, right, right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah, you're going to go right. left. Yeah. You had that yeah. terrible initiative. Problem. Yep. You've been rolling like crazy tonight. <laughs> yes, I have. Great. All right. Uh, next up is Dave. All right. Um, so I can move, swim a little bit, and then do like a spell if I wanted to? Yeah. All right. So what I want to do is uh, swim a little bit so that my angle at the mimic is not taken up by any of the of my fellow travelers here and I want them to yell out to me when I get to that moment because I can't you can, see. Yes, you can though because of the lightning. Yeah, because of the lightning you can see right now. I can see right now. All right. Yeah. So I, I move to an angle where I have an open shot and then assuming I turn blind again in a few seconds, I want to do my Eldritch Blast but I want you guys to yell to me when I'm pointing in the right direction and then I do it. You can see it. You can see I, for this round. You don't need it this oh, round. I, I can see for my whole round. All right. Well, then I, I do that thing without the signal. <laughs> Excellent. I got you guys just yelled at me anyway to practice in case I have to do this in the dark soon. <laughs> that's, yeah, no, we that's absolutely did. Please kill the thing. Am I pointing at it? <laughs> <laughs> do we all agree now. I'm pointing at it? Now. <laughs> now. Do I do it. it. I do it when he says now. <laughs> all right. Roll that D20. Okay. That's the wrong one. There we go. 18. Yeah. Nice. That'll hit. That is 1d10 plus 3. All right, so I roll a d10. Mm-hmm. That is this one. Yep. That's a 9 plus 3. 9 plus 3, 12 points of damage. So Snedrick yells now, and then there's a... <laughs> and a, a little bead of fire blasts from your palm, Dave, and smacks right into the center of the treasure. But instead of coins scattering, it just sort of like chars and you see what is very obviously like gray flesh that's been burned into place. And that is Dave's turn. Snedrick, you are up. All right. Kill it. Yeah, I know. It's just, so I don't want to use the my shock and grasp thing because I don't want to touch the fucker. I saw what happened to her and I'm not sure how good Ray of Frost does in a situation like this since 
the water's already pretty fucking it, cold. This isn't Pokemon. This isn't Pokemon. It doesn't I've, work like that. I've never played Pokemon. That's not I don't not understand helping. why Pokemon <laughs> that, plays. What the <laughs> fuck does that <laughs> have to do this with Are you Pokemon? saying we can capture it? <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, the camera pans out to Noah and he's all dressed like Ash Ketchum. <laughs> Sadly takes off his headphones and walks away. Anna means that um, there's no conditional effects underwater to magic and she is right. So, so... So despite the fact that it's already icy ass cold, I can use an ice blast and still hurt him. Okay. Then I want to do that. Yeah. Now, because of the cold of the water, that doesn't... <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Uh, fuck yourself. <laughs> roll a d20. <laughs> it freezes into a block, and we tie it to a rope, and we take it with us. Uh, it doesn't really matter. <laughs> I rolled a three anyway. So. Oh, hey. fucking Ooh, shit. Nice. So you send a blast of white light just above the mimic and just psh, hits into the side of the ship. All this light, can this not last until my next turn? It really can't. I think I actually do have to cast light. I do. Yeah, okay. I can get into my reasons why, but I don't I'll think I'll have that the that's first turn. Be... Exactly. You'll have the first turn and yeah, yeah, yeah. Do the it. mimic is after you. So, yeah. Here. Try to kill it. Um, that's uh one second. What do I add to my What are you casting, homie? It's my wisdom, right? I'm going to cast a Sacred Flame. Okay. And I add my Wisdom modifier to it, right? That's my spell casting. Would you read that uh, just for anyone who's not familiar with it? Flame-like radiance descends on a creature that you can see within range. The target must succeed on a dexterity... Oh, dexterity saving throw. Never mind. Or take uh, 1d8 radiant damage. The target gains no benefit from cover for saving throw. All right. So he's going to make a dexterity saving throw. Excellent. He needs to beat a 13. Yep. He manages it. Yeah. Well, shit. At least people can see. He glorps out of the way and, and sort of drags you <laughs> with him, but the flame lands just where he used to be. However, because of the sacred flame, I will keep the uh, light going for one more round. Phenomenal. You're welcome. Right. Don't let me die. One other technicality question. Sorry to throw it down. <laughs> Do I still have Snedrick's spell that makes me see a little five foot box? And I, so even when it's light, I just see the weird VR thing. No, he stopped doing that to you when you got inside the ship. I hope. I mean, when we got attacked by the guy. Yeah. 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 How oh, long okay. does it so last? That's anyway, a spell that you, you can go. just be like, this is going and now it's not. Yeah. Got it. Back to the top of the order. <laughs> Kala. You can see a sacred flame has lit Bridget, who is still sucked into this treasure by a big, toothy treasure chest. Oh, by the way, just very quickly, um, Heath, uh, my minor illusion only lasts for one minute, so that only lasted long enough to get you <laughs> underwater. Okay. And then after that, it was too late for you to, to go back up. You were just so. disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> and then I was just being dragged yeah, by a exactly, rope. Exactly. <laughs> Sorry. But like, just bummed. but like petulantly. <laughs> <laughs> Stop it. Uh, I have a physics question for Eli. Sure. Weapons, are they like underwater? Is it matter? It's like Pokemon. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's this not. This isn't like Final Pokemon. Fantasy it's 4, you like... motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> Hope you die of AIDS. <laughs> <laughs> it's like Blitzball, man. It's just like Blitzball. Oh, pay attention. oh don't even. <laughs> now I just want to go play Blitzball. <laughs> so fun. It's the only reason for that game. Oh, so now fun. I'm angry. That is, Anyways. <laughs> but then Cloud would get stronger than all Six your other players. Better. And so you'd just have him shoot from the other end of the court over There's and over cloud. Again. Wait, did, did you, did say, you cloud say Cloud from cloud. fucking Final Fantasy VII? Get, in, get your head out of your ass, Eli. <laughs> Can we dive? No, we can't diverge. Weapons underwater. <laughs> Do they go slow? Like, is it just normal? I hope they go really slow. I was going to ask. <laughs> so D&D 5th &D edition has a rules for underwater combat, mm -hmm. which is, uh, and I was going to bring this up, which is any weapon that is not shaped like a javelin or a spear has disadvantage. So a quarter, oh, a quarter a staff, staff is fine. Hell yeah. Why so would, a quarter, why quarter would, staff is fine. <laughs> okay, I don't know, sorry. man. Bring, it, bring it up with the nerds at Wizards of the Coast. Yeah, man. <laughs> <laughs> Look, 
if you're telling me a bunch of nerds didn't get into a pool <laughs> with a quarter step, and be like, okay. Do you so mean? a bunch of nerds at Wizard of the Coast got into a pool with scuba gear and threw javelins, and they were like, normal speed. Normal, There's a normal speed normal. javelin throw. Also, Morgan, if you don't bring it up to the DM, he probably won't remember. So yeah. just yeah. Kyle, generally yeah. don't Kyle, ask. I need you to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> How fast was that spear as I threw it at you? <laughs> <laughs> Normal fast? Well, I wasn't ready, so like <laughs> Take you it heard serious. my god, I lost my contact. I'll tell you god. when I'm ready. Slightly bruised me. <laughs> Cuz it's got duct tape on the end. Anyways, quarter staff. Fine, <laughs> right? Yeah. Okay, cool. Okay, I swing my quarter staff. Do it. So you're swimming over to him. Yeah, 10 plus 5. 10 plus 5. That's going to hit. Yeah. Okay. Uh Three plus three. Three plus three. All right, six damage to the mimic. It's not going to matter because he's got two HP, right? No, I have two HP. Oh, you have two HP. As far as treasure chests go, he looks just fine. I don't know why I gave this treasure chest he pronouns. Probably because he's grabby. (laughs) I was like, eh, it's probably a dude. Um, (sighs) I feel more violated now, thanks. (laughs) Yeah. Treasure, treasure chest is like, oh, come on. I'm just joking around. <laughs> oh, you see, you can't do anything these days. You can't do anything. <laughs> oh, my God. Everything's so political. He pulls up a little stand up mic and he's like, what's the deal with pronouns? <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> on, air, on airplanes. Uh, he starts hosting the Golden Globes. <laughs> <laughs> so that didn't kill him? That did not kill him. Okay. Got a lot of health. What have we done? 26 now? A lot. Was it that one? Yeah. All right. It's it's the treasure chest. Try again. Oh, fuck. I'm going to die. Or hopefully he won't, he won't attack me. We'll see. Well, I'll tell you what. Because, Claw, and this is what I was looking at as you were speaking, the mimic adheres to, any, because mimics are adhesive, the oh, mimic shit. adheres to anything that touches it. So it's stuck to my staff and I'm like trying to shake it off. Yeah, your staff is now adhered to the mimic. It still hurt it, but the uh, the your staff is now adhered to it. And you know what? It did not like being hit by you. So it is going to... Claw, let go of the staff. Just let it go. <laughs> it's actually going to try to bite you. So it's giant treasure chest jaws open and it sort of dives towards you, tries to take a bite out of you. And does bites you for 13 damage. Wow. That is the mimic's turn. Dave, you are up next. All right. I think um question about this mimic. He just bit claw. Mm-hmm. Like he's trying to eat him. Uh no, yeah. Is sure. this gonna go into whether mermaids eat each other? <laughs> um, yes, not, it will what? in a this second. Not a Let mermaid, me finish. It's a mimic. I knew we had that discussion for a reason. Every time he starts to talk, I frantically look through his spells. I'm like, what's he gonna do? What's he gonna do? Dear God, what's he, what does he think he can do? Summon a pug a pegacorn. No. I no, I'm gonna do something way more interesting. All right. I would like Eldritch to Eldritch Blast. Just in in order to <laughs> no. Okay. Super double Thinking, Eldritch Blast. Uh, I would. I have a plan that's not that. All right. Just a second. Now, I will figure this out. I want <laughs> to to distract this mimic. I would like to summon some bread and make him eat it. Yay! I <laughs> love hate this. you Interesting. so much. I'm, I want to summon the largest possible loaf of bread and kind of choke him with it. Okay. Well, you do not get to choose the bread. You know that. I do get to choose, and it's very large. A lovely, crazy person made a bread table on the internet, and we will be using their bread table, (laughs) Ethan, right? I will be contact. I'm contacting them right now. So quick reminder about the robe of summoning bread. As an action, you could reach into one of the robe's excessively loose sleeves and pull out a fist-sized roll or small loaf of bread. I have two I have very large fists. I'm a dragon. See? Bread table. The bread conjured by this robe is of random type, flavor, and ingredients, but is always of at least average quality. The bread is real, edible food, but disappears if not eaten within one hour of its creation. I am so going to die, and then you guys are all going to have to heal yourselves, and that's going to be fun for me to watch. We're going to have a snack. I need to bring up the bread table because 
I'm a fool who reminded you that you have a robe of bread summoning. Would you roll 2d10 <laughs> for me and tell me what the results are? What am I rolling? 2d10. Slack ass fucking DM didn't even have the bread table open as we went into didn't this fight. Didn't have the bread we, table Jesus. open. I right. hate you. <laughs> this is why we play the games. I am going right. to die and you guys are going to have to just go on without me. I rolled a three and a three. 33. 33. Oh, God, I want to be if you are out there. Look, I don't know if this show will ever become anything, but if this show ever becomes like huge and the guy who made the bread table is out there, please reach out to me. Every <laughs> bread entry on this table is the sh saddest short story. Sir, who created this bread table? If you kill me in this goddamn <laughs> round, I will murder you. I will find you. I will hunt you down. I will find you and I will find where you live. And I will show up at your door Listen, and I will this is... murder you in your next game. <laughs> what What bread? What bread? I have been promised that yeah. this bread, no matter what it is, will be at least of average quality, <laughs> perhaps higher. So no, this mimic may be haven't. very distracted. Okay. This is, I'm reading word for word from the bread table. You pull out one of Alton Brown's Southern biscuits. They're yes. really good. I've attached the recipe and then they have hyperlinked the word good. And it brought me to Food Network to Alton Brown's Southern Biscuit. <laughs> Alton Brown's an amazing chef. Thank you. Okay. So you have you have a biscuit and you're going to try and throw it to distract <laughs> the mimic. Through the water. Yeah. Okay. I feel like the this bread is... isn't going to last long in the ocean. <laughs> this this is... It's like Pokemon. The worst. <laughs> <laughs> this is a the bread is fine. persuasion? This is a persuasion check or deception. Uh, it's deception? persuasion. I think. Well, I think it's no, persuade. I think it's deception because I'm deceiving him into trying to bite it instead of you know. So he lets go of claw. What do you have higher? Right. Deception. That's why I said that. Yeah. I quit the show. I I think it's a persuasion check. Well, I think it's a you're deception. Not, you're not trying to fool him into thinking that the bread is claw. You're trying to get him. You're trying to persuade him to let go of claw and Bridget. And in a deceptive for the fashion. Did I not mention deceptively as an adverb earlier? I'll tell you what, because it's such a delicious biscuit and because of the goddamn ingenuity here, I will give you <laughs> advantage on this roll. I Thank you. hate everything about this. This is good. We have advantage. <laughs> if, if you succeed, I will tell you right now, if you succeed, this mimic is going to let go of Claw and Bridget. What? You're welcome. Well, Claw's staff and Bridget. So you have advantage. Roll. A 20? Yes, please. All right. And what's my plus? My plus is deception or perception or what? Your persuasion plus three. All right. Oh, not bad. 16 plus three. Roll that other one. Let me see. Oh, because I have advantage. Yeah. 14 plus three. 16 plus three it is. 19. That's correct. 19. That's a really attractive biscuit that's, already. That's pretty, Plus, it's a 19 out of 20 attractive. It's a hugely a, attractive biscuit. That's a fucking attractive ass biscuit. I'll tell you what, he it doesn't think to let go of the staff, but it does entirely let go of Bridget. And you see it just rawr, clamps down, eats that biscuit. And uh, I am going to give it two points of health back for that delicious biscuit. <laughs> DM give it and the DM take it away. You see how stupid you are? <laughs> You're fine. You're no longer I being grabbed by a twice. fucking treasure chest demon from the ocean. You will not be able to see anything if I heal myself. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I mean, at this uh, point, Snitch. why do we want him to be able to see I don't, anything? You know what? I don't fucking care anymore. So yeah, I'm going to heal myself since it's... Wait, no, it's Snedrick's turn first. If you don't want to heal yourself, I'll just give you some bread. You get like two points. <laughs> it's Snedrick's turn. Snedrick, it's your turn. I give Dave a thumbs up. All right. I'm thank you. I'm gonna use my ray of frost. We fist now, bump. My ray of frost Absolutely. also has a it's a blue white light streak when I when I Ooh. shoot it. So that should give that should give off light as well, right? <laughs> oh <laughs> yep. fuck yeah. This is this is the most lit up part of the ocean if anybody is watching yeah. from above. <laughs> read that uh read that attack description for anyone who doesn't know it. All right. A frigid beam of blue white light streak. A frigid beam of light. Okay, fine. 
a frigid beam <laughs> of blue white light <laughs> streaks towards a creature within range. First of all, <laughs> make a range spell attack against the target. On a hit, it takes one d8 cold damage. And I don't think this is going to matter much. Its speed is reduced by 10 feet until the start of my next turn. All right. Hell yeah. <laughs> Roll that d20. Um, do I know what I have to beat on this one? No, because that's its armor class. Oh, okay. 15 plus five. That's a 20. That'll hit. Definitely beats it. Yeah, that'll hit. Roll that d8 for me. I got to make sure on this one because one time I rolled a d10 and when you told me that and I, I said nine <laughs> and nobody noticed except the listeners. Okay, here we go. <laughs> five. 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 A wham. So I undid that biscuit and then some. Yeah, I didn't actually give him any health for the biscuit. This mimic does not need help. Also, oh. then next time he pulled bread out, he'd be like, no, I pulled out seven loaves of bread. So I technically am back to full out. <laughs> yeah, right, no, right. I was not giving these biscuits healing powers. Mr. Bread Table, yes, wherever you are. Yes, you are. That's, a, that's a canon. Yep. That's official. It's, can it's canon. You can't take no backsies. All right. Uh, Bridget, it is your turn. I am casting Cure Wounds on myself. Smart. So that uh, is, Roll that D8 for me. That is, I got seven points back. Nice. All right. Back to the top of the order. Claw, because of Snedrick's last spell, you can still see. You have four hit points. Your quarterstaff is currently stuck onto the mimic. Yep. Um, Definitely let go of the quarterstaff. No, I think, I think I already did, didn't I? I hope so. Because it moved to go get the biscuit, right? Yeah. Yeah, did you let go? It's up to you. No. Yeah, we'll get that back later. No, no, yeah, I didn't let go, so it dragged me with it, right? Sure. Okay. Uh, you had the choice, and you, you've chosen to be dragged with it. Yeah, because I'm going to make an unarmed strike. Oh, my God. So you're going to be attached to it this time. Yeah. Yep. You don't have any ranged attacks? You don't have any, like, any darts you can throw or anything no, like I that? No, I do, but they're a lot less powerful. I'm going to do... Yeah, but now you're going to be attached to the thing, though. Well, the, hopefully I'll take it out All right. Hit, then. Well, you know I'll what? give him some bread. He has the next attack. Just keep that in mind. And you're sitting yep, at four Yep, he hit. does. So that's a d20. Hit it. Roll it. I'm going to do an unarmed strike, and then I'm going to do flurry of blows after that. Nice, which means... Three attacks. Three attacks. So you're going to punch, punch, kick. You are literally Br'er Rabbiting this mimic. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Hopefully it dies. You stick to it, man. <laughs> yeah, you're going to be entirely attached to it soon. All right, He's going to have to do a headbutt next. <laughs> okay. He's going to be playing Twister with this mimic in a second. I don't think this is the best idea. <laughs> Roll three D20 yep, for me. I got an eight plus three, a 12, nope. a 12 plus three. Yes. And a 10 plus three. Yes. Okay. So roll two D4 for me. I got a four plus three and a one plus three. So that is it's 11. 11. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Way too slow. I was in my head for such a long time being like, Come on, e Buzz. You <laughs> Did you try it. to like carry a number? What's happening? Oh. <laughs> All right. Oh this mimic God. is not looking good. Like pieces of treasure are now falling off of it, sort of scattering around. And as the pieces of treasure are falling off, they turn into these blobs of gray flesh. So I now have two hands and a foot and my staff stuck to the treasure chest. That is correct. You have two hands, a foot, and your staff stuck to this treasure chest. All right, so I'm cool. going to yell out real quick at this moment, real quick before he takes a, out, takes this attack. I'm going to yell to the mimic, hey, he got more of that bread. See if I can bread. make him attack <laughs> Dave instead. <laughs> All right, <laughs> excellent. Uh, good to know. Claw, just one thing I want to point out. I believe because, yeah, you can make an additional unarmed strike if you want to because you're a monk. It, it's you do not, have a limb It's not left. like that one leg is going to make much difference to you. <laughs> That's point. true. So. That's fair. It might. Yeah. All right. Move past it. But just keep that in mind in future when you make an unarmed strike. You get oh, no, I meant losing that other action. leg. Like, it's not, gonna, not like he's going to have yeah. a hell of a lot more mobility have... if that also gets stuck. Yeah. <laughs> Are you saying I'm taking one more attack or no? You can take one more attack. Okay, so D20, right? Yep. Oh, my God. oh 17 plus three. Yeah, that'll hit. Do a headbutt. Get yourself fully D4. stuck. Face right in. <laughs> that is one of my options. 
You can <laughs> touch, headbutt. kick, headbutt, or use a similar force. Definitely headbutt. What would you rather have, your foot or your head? I'm going to use a crotch, a crotch force. Oh, you just do a crotch hump. Yep. <laughs> just you can do a, you can do a, there's a pelvic thrust that you're allowed to do as, a, as an attack here. Absolutely. Two plus three. <laughs> Two plus three. So that's five more. Oh, and now my his God. dick is you also just... stuck to the mimic. <laughs> <laughs> yep. All right. So you you've got five both hands. Of damage with your dick. <laughs> a foot. <laughs> and your bird dick attached to this mimic, but it is looking rough. It's is not dead. Jesus. <laughs> not even close to dead. Well, it, no, it, it is very close. It does not look good. It is not dead. I feel like it can't attack because I have smothered it, but sure. <laughs> it's going to have to. Can't attack around my dick. <laughs> <laughs> well, here's the question. Wait, wait, wait. I have an important question. If I was dragged by the staff, didn't I attack it from behind so I'm technically away from its teeth? So mimic teeth are not one direction. They're omnidirectional because they're shape changers. That sounds made up. That's... <laughs> Yeah, oh, no, like, it is, man. Yeah. <laughs> well, this is all made up. No, I've I've seen it in that uh, ter Terminator Two. That's a documentary. Um, if you, <laughs> I was gonna say, we can go to the fucking aquarium and check oh, out so a this guy's underwater basically liquid metal, like th that type he's, of capability. He's a, he's a shapeshifter. Yeah, yeah, he can just change yeah. shape. Yeah, he's so like he Odo can change shape to like him behind backwards. So yeah, so. Like all grabby abusers with male pronouns, the mimic is now very <laughs> uncomfortable. So it's going to try and use one of its pseudopod tentacles to like smack you away. And it will hit. And it is going to do nine points of damage. You're dead. Okay. I am dead. I bet if You're this was dead. Dave, she You're, wouldn't resurrect He's passed you. out. <laughs> You're passed out. You're not dead. Yeah. I'd definitely wait until an opportune moment. To resurrect. <laughs> after you've dragged me to the place with the rope. No, you know, after, it would have been it would have been after I had talked to Umberly, probably. Yeah, right, right. After there's nothing left to steal. Yeah. Exactly. Just waiting for all of you to get knocked out. It's like, oh no. Oh no. So Go to have a conversation later. Oh no, Dave, here, quick, give him some bread closer. I know we'll do it together. Teamwork makes the dream work. <laughs> I said nine damage, yeah? Yeah, nine. All right. So this actually gives us a chance to explain death saving throws. So, Claude, you are now unconscious. You are not dead. On your turn, you will roll a d20. If you roll a 10 or above, that is one save. If you roll a 10 or below, that is one not save. If you roll three saves, you stabilize at one hit point but are still unconscious. If you roll under a 10 three times, Claude dies forever. If you roll a 1 or a 20, it counts as 2 of either the good or the bad result. And that's going to happen on your turn. But that was the Mimic's turn, which means Dave is up next. Dave, it's your turn. Nice. Okay. I want, I'm within 30 feet, right? Yeah. We said, you said like 25? For sure. Alright. I will be, again, moving to a good angle, just in case I wasn't already. So I got a clear shot. I'm going to shoot the Witch Bolt. Witch Bolt. Nice. Roll that d20 for me. All right. That is a 19. Plus five. Plus five. Thank you. Ooh. Yeah. No, that'll absolutely hit. Roll that d12. Well, the one that probably has 12 as the highest number. Yep. Five. Five. All right. Yeah, this plus one's looking something. No, plus nothing. Just I'm just going to say plus something when I don't know. 12. In case. Uh, but for those who don't know, read the description for Witch Bolt for us. Witch Bolt is a beam of crackling blue energy that lances out towards a creature within range, forming a sustained arc of lightning between me and the target. Make a ranged spell attack against that creature. On a hit, the target takes 1d12 lightning damage. And on each of my turns for the duration, I can use my action to deal 1d12 lightning damage to the target automatically. Oh, that's fucking sweet. Yeah, this, I, this is better than I thought it was. I didn't read the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> the spell ends if I use my action to do anything else. The spell also ends if the target is ever outside of the spell's range or if it has total cover from me. All right. Good to know. So you did five points of damage. This mimic is looking rough. Just... Just treasure Jesus. shedding from Feel it like this in drones. Yeah. Snedrick, your turn. All right. I am... I guess I'm going to use my Ray of Frost again. 
Ray of Frost. Um, we really should have used one of those eight or 11s when Anna got um, caught. I was, I was going to use because I, I can use it once per turn, not per fight. Mm-hmm. Oh, cool. um, so I'm, I was going to use that this time. to That'll give me an automatic 16 because I've determined that his armor class is 13. So. <laughs> Ooh, yeah. oh, look at you doing the meta math. It's like addition, Smart. not. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, tw- it's 12. It's 12, and the fact that it's 12 means that I feel like I probably fucked up the math somewhere because I know well, no, Noah's I, I, got I a knew, I know a 13 hit it, so, you know, I knew it was it was <laughs> okay. not less, or it was uh, not greater. Yeah, that'll hit. All right. Roll that. Uh, six. Six. All right. Six damage. Tell me how rough he's looking again. Mm-hmm. You that fucker. just kills him. So nice. he's sort of the treasure pile moves up again. The ray of frost hits it. And because that light is so frigid, because of the frigidity of that light, <laughs> that beam, the frigid quality of that light, the mimic freezes solid as one block and doesn't move. Am I You've frozen defeated? to it? Yes. You are, you, are, you are absolutely frozen to it like the kid in uh, A Christmas Story. <laughs> <laughs> By the dick. By, by the dick, yeah. Arms by and legs dick. splayed out behind me, attached by the foreskin. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Tune in next week to find out how they'll pour water underwater on Claw's dick. Next week on D and D minus. Hey, everybody, just popping in real quick to thank you for listening to the show. I hope you're enjoying it as much as we enjoy making it. Uh, This has been just such a fun project to do, and the appreciation, the positivity we've gotten from some of you is really, really humbling. Um, If you like the show, why not tell your friends about it? Uh, Twitter and Facebook and all that stuff, that's how people find out about it. So tweet about the show, Facebook, send it to your friends. Uh, Everybody could use a little entertainment right now, so never been a better time to share the show and if you love the show you want more of it why not sign up to support us at patreon.com forward slash dnd minus all spelled out we've got a bonus episode on there of the short game lasers and feelings as well as a behind the scenes dungeon masters q a that i threw up there and those are both available uh, when you give us a little bit of money over at patreon.com slash dnd minus All right. Well, thank you all so much for listening again, and we will see you next month. You make your way through the broken hull of Valkyr's Gift and into Umberly's Cave. As you swim, you can actually see quite clearly because the inside of the cave is lit by bioluminescent algae. And as you go further into the cave, you can hear what appears to be chattering and talking in the chamber just ahead of you. Wait a second. I need to, just in case I didn't do this last time, I'm sparing the dying on Morgan so he doesn't have to do any more saving throws. Do we want to try the saving throws first? So you can save (laughs) Add some zip and some zip to this adventure. If I get like three, do you want to try like two and then... Hey, Morgan, (laughs) it doesn't give you any advantages. So why are you trying to be like... No, but what if somebody else dies and you need to use it again? Uh, because it's a cantrip, I can use it as many times as I want. Oh, cool. Perfect. All right. So, Morgan, you are still unconscious, but you're down to one hit point. All right. Are we still underwater right now? Yes. And we're still affected by the spell that makes all the physics underwater as if we're not underwater. Correct. Got it. I mean, we should probably just go in there and talk to her, right? I'll go first. I have one hit point. <laughs> you actually are still passed out, bud. Yeah, you're asleep. So we could just kind of like you're go we could kinda like push him out in front yeah. of us. Yeah. <laughs> Why not? Just in the, the water. The Aarakocqua comes floating into the room. <laughs> yeah, like we can put him on a rope and just kind of like dangle him out like bait and see what happens. I've talked to this god before. I feel like I should go first. All right. I'm going to walk around that corner or right. off into the distance or wherever you swim. Said but yeah, sure. I'd like you to swim as if you're walking, though. <laughs> you know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Exactly. No, I'm doing like a slow motion walk. Like there's an explosion behind me Perfect. in a movie. Yeah, Yeah. you're running man swimming your way into this chamber. (laughs) (laughs) I'd like to moonwalk the last few inches, by the way. (laughs) Nailed it. (laughs) (laughs) Bridget comes water moonwalking backwards into this chamber. And inside this chamber, you see two of the strangest looking merfolk 
you've ever seen. The usually green seaweed that merfolk wear in their hair has been bleached blonde, and these particular merfolk have shelled what appears to be hundreds, if not thousands, of zebra mollusks to make them into zebra print tops and bottoms, and they've put them on their fingernails as well, and the whole thing is in garish spots and prints and zebra stripes, and the moment you make it into the room, they see you and they go, Oh. My. God. Bridget! And they begin to scream and they run towards you. They embrace you in a huge hug. These two oh, merfolk do. Hi. Hi. Oh my God, it's been forever. What are you? T- oh, 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 oh. You have friends? Bring them in. Bring them in. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I got friends now. One of them's not looking too good because of the, the, what was it called? The, the shapeshifter. Mimic. Hanging out back there. A sleeping claw mumbles. Mimic. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god I am horrified Trisha Trisha did you not clean up the mimic in the front hallway okay I do not need this from you right now all right I have gone through enough today without you telling me I have to clean all the mimics out of the ship and they begin to scream at each other loudly and they're just like fighting back and forth as the rest of you make your way into this chamber Ooh, this is okay. awkward well then somebody grab me I didn't have to even show them my tattoo. All right, let's go. Yeah, we're going to drag you. I mean, you're technically tied to me with a rope, so. Oh, yeah, good point. Yeah. So they stop fighting as everyone makes it into the room, and they turn to you, and they say, So, are you here to see the boss? Yeah, are you here to see the boss? I believe I'm supposed to, yeah. Uh, More correspondence with uh, Valkyr. Oh, Valkyr. Mm, I knew it. I knew he would send you, Bridget. And I do not say this to be bitchy because you know I love you and you know I think you're fantastic, but you need to drop him for the mistress. You know what I'm saying? Huh? I think, yeah. Yeah, well, just think yeah, about it. Maybe, I don't know. He He's actually, I don't know. He's helped me a lot recently, it looks like. So I don't know. Anyway. I was reading this fantastic article. I'll send it to you. It's a scroll. I was reading this fantastic scroll. I sent it to you about how like cohabitation, dangerous relationships could get worse and worse. It's ah. from BuzzFeed. The people ah. who feed bees, the scrolls, and then the scroll, <laughs> then the bees fly over to you and shit them into your hand. Whoa. It's not a perfect system. That's what happens. Fantasy BuzzFeed. I Anyways, let me tell you, BuzzFeed has been described as an awful lot of bee shit before. And you're, you're, <laughs> you've hit the nail right on the head there. Let me get the mistress for you. Let me get the mistress for you. Just uh, one second. Everybody, uh, join hands. Everyone, gather around in a circle. In a circle. Well, one of one of us is actually uh, a a little bit demised. I mean, on the brink of death. Uh, Do you happen to have any healing potions or anything? Oh, that's one of you, honey. I am so so honestly. I thought he was a sacrifice to the mistress. I'm glad you told me. Well, we can do whichever you think. We can still do that. Yeah. Okay, two votes, and the sleeping one just said we could sacrifice him. That's an interesting (laughs) choice. All right, so we've got three votes for sacrifice. Okay. Maybe we will, maybe we won't. We're we're leaving it on a maybe, is what I'm hearing. I, uh, all right, I'm going to grab one of Claw's sleeping hands. Yeah, and she, uh, and as you grab her hand, she snaps her fingers, and Claw, healing energy fills your body, and you are now completely healed. What? Can I be completely healed? Oh, do you need to be? Well, can you say it in your character voice? <laughs> oh, oh, can I? Sorry, one second. I got to get back into the Scottish. Just saying, people pay good fantasy money. Fantasy Dwarven. Sorry, Fantasy Dwarven. <laughs> I will, oh, oh, can I get one too? Oh, of course. Uh, Deborah, why don't you do the rest of them? Oh my God, I would so love that. And she waves her hand in these sort of intricate circles and healing energy spills out from her hands and covers all of you. You're all fully restored. You can give yourself a long rest. Yeah. You are fully restored back to health. Um, however, Dave, the dragonborn, there is one change that has taken place. What's that? Instead of the smooth sort of lizard-like skull that you had before, You now have that smooth green lizard-like skull with absolutely banging frosted tips. Awesome. (laughs) I kind of like to think I've always had something similar to that, but okay, now I have that? Uh, How does he... Wait, how does he know that? Now it's fucking canon. He he doesn't know that yet. 
He doesn't know that yet. No one tell him. No one so you're telling him. me that <laughs> the effect of taking oh a long God. rest in this area is for my tips to be frosted now? This particular mer lady's yeah. magic healed you and frosted your tips. I was going to say, it's nice. probably Deborah. I would say <laughs> welcome to Fantasy Flavor Town, but I don't know if you would know what I was talking about right now, Dave. I'm not... Am I looking like you're like a Guy Fieri or more like a, like I was thinking like Sync? I was thinking like JG. <laughs> more like Backstreet Boys. <laughs> fuck Definitely. Oh, yeah. Maybe 98 the degrees. Fuck out of my you die. This is a sacred space. This is an <laughs> imagine, don't you space. Dare. imagine O-Town don't not dare signed. You. Dare bring <laughs> that Backstreet Boys. Ugh, by the tentacly beard of the old one. I can't. <laughs> We're I definitely can't. sacrificing you. <laughs> Good. So, three votes. <laughs> as you join hands, the mermaids begin to chant, Mistress, 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 Mistress. mistress. Oh, mistress. and the, <laughs> I thought they were going to start singing Backstreet Boys. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, 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 yeah. That's not the Backstreet Boys, and everyone's going to email Britney me Spears. now. It's the worst. That's fantasy it's the Britney worst. Spears. I quit the podcast. <laughs> I can't deal with this kind of feedback. So as they chant, the wall behind you slowly creaks open and reveals that it is not a wall at all. But instead, it was the single closed eye of the goddess of storms, Umberly, the Mega Kraken. Uh... <laughs> That's weird. You put your eye right up like a wall. Do you not get poked sometimes with that? So... A quick word on Krakens, for those who aren't familiar. Krakens are giant amphibious beasts around the size of a small island. And Umberly, goddess of storms, is a mega kraken. She's the size of five or six small islands. And her eye takes up the size of what I would say is a small to regular sized movie screen. So if you want to know just at what the size of what you're looking at is. I don't think the scale makes sense. She draws back from where her eye was, and you are facing the goddess of storms, Umberly the Mega Kraken, for many of you the first time, and Bridget, for you, one of many times. Hi. She stares at all of you for a moment and lets out an incredible roar that echoes through the water. It would be deafening if you weren't protected by your potions of underwater breathing spell, but luckily you are. And in your head, hmm. a voice clearly speaks in common. Hello. Hello. Oh, Bridget, you brought me some friends. Who are these people? Well, these are these are my, my uh, crew because I'm not on the ship anymore, as you, you may be well aware at this point. Um... Yeah. We, Did you want to introduce us one by one, please? Uh, uh, that's Dave. Hello. And this one over here. I can fly. No need is... for that, Bridget. Okay. Because I, being a goddess of the storms, know exactly who you've brought. Also, because it would be bad podcasting. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's important for us to establish our characters to you as a new... It's yes. Fine. This one's Snedrick, and the other two you might as well call Beavis and Butthead. Wait, which one's Beavis? Fantastic. Wait, Heath is Beavis because he has blonde hair now. <laughs> Fantastic. What brings you to my domain? <laughs> the scintillating intelligence of the well, things that come out of these ones' mouths. Uh, I I come bearing news from Valkyr. Valkyr. Uh, what does he want now? And she sort of impatiently waves her tentacles below her, knocking a blue whale several thousand feet in a different direction as she does. Oh, sorry, buddy. Bye. Uh, you know how he gets when, uh, when he doesn't hear from you in a while. I, I hear it was going great between you two for a while there. Everything's fine. He just doesn't respect my space. I mean, aren't I entitled to a little space? I am, after all, a mega kraken. I know, and a lot of people don't get that, you know? I I just think it might it might behoove you to uh maybe send him a little note or something because he's he's you know how he gets. He's just like wailing and crying and doing the whole tantrum thing that he normally does. And maybe even just like, you know, check out one of his stories on the gram or something like that. They, they, you or, you know what? Like a attention. picture. Like a picture on the, the that giant spider web that is in all of our minds, the fantasy spider web. Sure, giant spider web, fantasy spider web in all of our minds. Exactly. You're right. You're right. I mean, 
there's a need for space and then there's a need to affirm a relationship. It's just, if I could be honest, you know. You can always be honest with me. Thank you. It's just, uh, well, how do I put it? I'm, I can't believe I'm going to tell you first, Bridget, but I'm pregnant. (gasps) Hmm. Oh my God. Oh my God. Uh, Mm -hmm. Woohoo. Oh, wow. Uh, just also a question like zero, zero to 100. How sure are you it is uh, Valkyr's child? I'm going to Sacred Flame. Dave. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, yeah. Sacred Flame lights up behind Dave. However, as you do, you see Umberly wave a tentacle. And instead of burning him for damage, as it usually would, the shape and pattern of an Ed Hardy t shirt <laughs> is burned into the outside of Dave's armor. Sweet. Oh, this goes great with my frosted tips. <laughs> I'm going to go get is, bottle service you know, at a club after this. I can't wait. You know what? I meant to physically harm him, but that is actually better punishment, I think. I, I thank I you. Oh. I like this. I don't know what you're talking about. I did it as a compliment because exactly. you look amazing. Thank you, Umberly. <laughs> Can I give you one more piece of advice? I would, love, I would love some advice. God to Dragonborn? <laughs> yeah. What? You need a tan. You need a tan. No like, such thing as an unattractive what, man. What, just a lazy okay. one. What, would, what, what shade would you describe my, my skin as now? Green. Green? <laughs> you think mm-hmm. I need to tan it up? Darker green. Darker like green. an emerald. Okay, okay. Yeah, I mean to digest, if anything. Three votes. Maybe well, that sacred flame will give me an extra tan. I like everything that's happening right now. <laughs> I appreciate you all sending the message. So cir- uh, circling back, like, uh, are you fucking a lot of other gods? Or oh was it my just- god. Just, and uh, as you say the words, here. are you fucking a lot of other gods? <laughs> uh, you notice that your one second, what are other garbage things? Oh, your shoes turn into <laughs> sandals with socks. <laughs> I'm so happy. And Umberly turns to you and goes, I could do this all day. I could do this I all do day. This <laughs> all day. All day, too. I'm saying it right back to you. I love zip lining. You want to do this? Read into your robe of breadening. Do it. I'm doing it. I take out my... Uh, I, would you like some bread? I could summon it right now. Reach into your roll of breadening. Do you want me to say out loud I that mean, I am, in fact, he, reaching he into my roll of it. breadening? <laughs> yes. You can't see and him. Instead of pulling out bread for the first time ever, you pull out a comb. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, thank you all for visiting. I appreciate you helping me work through this. Let me talk to Valkyr. Do you all want to ride to the surface or do you want to die here when the spell runs out? I would love the all right to the surface, please. That would be great. All right. Everyone step onto my tentacle. Oh. You step onto her <laughs> tentacles and at unimaginable speed, she soars up through the water. The tentacle raises you miles and miles and miles or however long it is that you swam that you guys talked about <laughs> earlier about the Marianas Trench, but it's fine because magic explains all the science. Magic, magic. You yeah. were magicked to the magic and she deposits you there. Let's add another enormous crack and roar, which you hear in your head says, Valkyr, honey, let's have a dinner date. Don't be like this. <gasps> you hear a howl of pleasure and anticipation from Valkyr's temple as lightning hits the water and a lightning-enshrined mega kraken jumps happily over the waves and over the water into the distance. Now, now, now ah. hold on. W- wait, don't we need the uh, circle of <laughs> lightning or whatever? I, I'm, sure th- <laughs> I'm glad you mentioned that, Snedrick, because as you say that, Bridget, you feel a metal clink. <gasps> In your pocket. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I'm going to take it out of my pocket. Shouldn't you be holding that over your head or something? And, and then a little tune, a little ditty comes up. Piece of a heart or something. <laughs> right? <laughs> I just want to bring everyone's attention, listeners and participants alike, to the fact that you, the four who ruined the shattering this year, just emerged out of the water raised a sacred item of this island above your head and are singing various tunes from various Earth video games. I just want us all to live in this moment. (laughs) (laughs) But yes, it is, in fact, the circlet of lightning. The first piece that goes with the wand of seven parts. Okay, let's let's get the fuck out of here. I am so sick of my hometown. Can we go? 
Can we get you a drink? Can we go back and hang out with your parents one more time? Yeah. Though? Can we get oh, a drink? Oh, Jesus. They were super fun. They played <laughs> oh, instruments. <God's> <laughs> oh, God. I feel like, yeah, I feel like we haven't boarded the ship yet. I feel like we want to go hang out. As you make your way through the island and onto the ship that will take you back to your home island and to Blade and to Floon and the next parts of your adventure, Bridget, you notice that it wasn't just the circlet of lightning that landed in your pocket. There's also a small scroll made out of bee vomit, actually. And on it is written a simple message. Enjoy the extra lightning powers. Kissy face, <gasps> Umberly. Oh. Oh. And on that note, you head back to your home and the next part of your adventure. <laughs> I can move my own around. Please let me move my own around. (laughs) Not everyone can move their own around. I know. I know it's a left turn. I know it's a left turn coming up. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Okay. We also just found out that Morgan's not circumcised. Interesting. Excellent. (laughs) He's a bird. Yeah, most birds are. Vultures are. What a weird anti-Semitic joke. All right. Oh, I'm cutting God. that, but I'm so proud of myself. The preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm, LLC. Copyright 2020. All rights reserved.